primary market and destination for U.S. companies. So we're not doing this because we're altruistic. We're doing this because we are driven by a certain amount of um, uh, personal interest. But at the end of the day, um, the development of these policies in India is going to have a substantial impact on India's ability to create and sustain jobs and, and build up their, their capacity um, in a number of different industrial sectors. So I think it's a very relevant discussion and that's why we're all here today. So I'm not going to give you a PowerPoint presentation. I'm just going to briefly talk about how the U.S. government has looked at IP from a policy perspective um, and where we have um, made some calculated choices and what, and what those choices have meant in terms of economic growth and development. Um, from the outset, you know, IP has been one of the core fundamental principles of you know, our economic theory. It was recognized in our constitution and IP is something that has been promoted um, by, um, by the U.S. government. And, um, you know, we're very strong believers in, in the value of strong IP systems. Now, when we're looking at IP policy, what we're trying to do is make sure that our systems, whether they be, you know, purely IP or research and development or, or science policies, that they're going to provide the necessary incentives for innovation because we know that innovation drives economic growth. And ultimately, you want to make sure that every system is going to be inclusive and accessible to all members of society. So typically, when you're looking at US IP policy, many people look at our research and development policies, our science policies, and technology transfer. And the one thing that is highlighted is the Bayh-Dole Act, which was enacted in 1980. And we have a lot of data that we can look through from pre-1980 and post-1980. And what you'll see is that by dole was truly transformative. It basically unlocked a lot of potential, created a lot of jobs and opportunities within the US. And it did it by ensuring that um, the public was able to benefit from US federally funded research. Now, before by dole um, federal research dollars were transferred to federal labs and universities but the IP rights were held by the federal government and any licenses for products that were produced using that intellectual property were licensed on a non-exclusive basis. This wasn't good for economic growth and there wasn't a really a lot of activity within um, you know, various industrial sectors. After Bayh-Dole, when you actually allowed universities to take title to inventions that originated using federal research funds, they were able to find the appropriate partner make the additional investments in time and money to actually develop commercial products. And what you'd find is that you actually started to see industry sectors develop. You started to see more products come onto the market. You saw the level of research activity grow and mature. And, you know, the numbers are startling. You know, in 2000, in 2000 Autumn noted that Baidol had contributed $40 billion to the U.S. economy, was linked to 260,000 jobs. 2005 data indicates that there are over 30,000 licenses that are executed between uh, U.S. universities and, and uh, you know, small and large businesses throughout the U.S. And, you know, progress continues. So Baidol has worked. Well, we did it on the university sector and we realized it was working in the university sector. Let's open up our federal labs and make sure that universities and other non-federal partners can work with the scientists in our labs to, again, develop technologies that are going to be beneficial to the public and, you know, we have a similar success story that we can tell with respect to the activities and the research that's conducted in federal labs throughout the United States. So technology transfer policies can be used very effectively to, pr to promote economic development. They've definitely helped us enhance U.S. competitiveness through innovation because we've opened up brand new areas of business, whether you're talking biotechnology, whether you're talking about semiconductor technology, whether you're talking about pharmaceuticals. A lot of this originated out of federally funded research, either with small businesses, with universities, or with other non-federal partners.